check, 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 you noob. He's always filming. What's up, guys? My name is Ben. Work here at Prism Supply. This is Jake. You've seen him on our channel a lot before. We are going to give you a quick shop tour today, show you around a little bit. It's one of our most requested ask on YouTube, so yep. we're going to show you around. UPS, yeah, UPS guys coming, man. Coming. Man. See you, ma'am. A little background. I started this business with my brother, Zach, in 2012 with the intention of just designing products for ourselves. And from there, just kind of naturally and organically took off. Now he's got six people whose families depend on making money. <laughs> We're gonna show you around, show you what we do on a daily basis and uh, what's behind the parts that you're hopefully getting in the mail when you buy them after you watch this video. So we actually have two spaces. So this one is our, our shop space and our shipping space. And then we've expanded into the perfectly colored pink building next door, which is our office space. That's where all the computers are. So this is kind of the main shop area, if you will. We got a couple lifts here where we're working on projects. We used to do a lot of customer work, so making custom sissy bars, handlebars, building bikes for people. We pretty much do zero of that now, and it's, and it's our own projects or bikes for prototyping parts. So we're gonna walk over to that far side of the shop where the boys are working. It's a little louder over there, but that's our, uh, that's our dirty area, our fabrication area. We try to make as many of the parts in-house as possible. We feel like we have control over quality there. And then for those parts that we don't make in-house, we try to keep it all as much made in USA as possible. You'll see Derek here in his natural habitat. You may know him as Dwayne's Powertrains. Uh, say hey, Derek. What the? <laughs> <laughs> He's working on some of his uh, Dwayne's Powertrain motor work at the moment. You'll see some of our hardtails on the table. That's what Derek does a lot of here is welding all our hardtails. Uh, he does all the finished welding for us. He's, uh, uh, he's our professional beer drinking fisherman, bass fisherman. That's probably his favorite thing to do outside of work is fish. Well, this, it's his favorite thing to do work included as well. I mean, he would choose to fish instead of work. What do you think he likes more, beer drinking or fishing? He's better at beer drinking. If you had to choose for the rest of your life between beer drinking or fishing, which one would you choose? Damn. <laughs> I'm gonna say fishing. One. I'm gonna say fishing. Wow. <laughs> Looks so like he's more of a, going so more of a fisherman than a, uh, than a beer drinking man, I guess. So Derek does, he makes every single hardtail that's came out of this place. Um, so if you look right here, these are the bends for our Sportster hardtails. Derek grinds that material, bends that material, welds that material, puts it in the fixture over here, makes it all come together into our completed hardtail kit. Work our way back in the cave over here. Over here is our vertical bandsaw. Dual is the manufacturer. I love this piece of equipment. We've had it for, I don't know, probably five years. It's a solid piece, never gives us any trouble. Love the look of it, love the brand, love everything about this piece of equipment. Over here, the old uh, Kevin Harvick special. See, Ben, aren't you impressed that I knew that? I am, I, I did not think you were gonna know whose number that was, so <laughs> um, well done. The Kevin Harvick special sand blaster, just blast things, nothing really to say about that. Here's our horizontal bandsaw, so we'll use that for uh, cutting material, when we have to cut all this tubing to length, we'll use that saw to cut it. First welder here, we have an Everlast TIG welder. I want to take my answer back. <laughs> it's beer drinking. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> I, think, I, think I think that's a good choice for you. <laughs> so the first one, we have an Everlast TIG welder. That's Dwayne's powertrains. He uses that for basically welding aluminum. Uh, it's got a water cooler on it. The one beside it is our everyday Miller TIG welder. That's a big boy, it's just a powerhouse. And beside that we have our MIG welder, which we don't MIG any of our parts. So it's only if we're uh, making furniture, doing something like that. Personal for, projects, yeah, a lot for, of personal projects, yeah, stuff like for that. For ourselves. This is Rob here, bending some of our four inch mid pegs. Rob is our uh, elder statesman of the group. He's right. the one that we always have to say yes sir or no sir to. Yep, he's a real else, outdoorsman. Or else to get uh, in trouble. He eats lunch at exactly 10.59 and 59 seconds every day. He's a very <laughs> regimented man. In his spare time, he, he likes to cut down trees. That's his favorite hobby. Um, <laughs> what else, Rob? Man of mystery. How long have you been working here, Rob? I mean, like when we started. Rob is the longest tenured employee here. 2013. Yeah, it was me and Zach that started the company, and then um, a couple years into that, I decided to go full-time, and at that same time, Rob went full-time with me, so we kind of took that plunge together, and he's been here since then, so that's probably been, what, seven years? I'd say close to that. Rob, what do you listen to every day? Oh, all different kinds of stuff. 
A real man of mystery, right, your, as he said. What's your go-to band? How about that? Rock and roll band. Oh. Put him on the spot. Most interesting man in the world. <laughs> yeah. Pretty boring. Uh, ladies, he's single. <laughs> he is single. Derek, not single. Sorry, ladies. Recently engaged. Make sure you go to Dwayne's Powertrains and spam him with congratulations on his Instagram. Ex tools. Accepting wedding gifts in the form of tools. Yes. Or peanut M&Ms. This is our, our manual lathe. It, we actually probably, we're, we're due for a new one. This one's uh, a little rough. Um, I, can't, I, I think it's a closing. I don't remember the manufacturer exactly. But anyway, we're due for another one of these soon. Rob is over here heating and bending some of our four inch mid pegs. So we machine them like this, with the thread already in it. It's a little cross drilled hole, and then bend it into that. So Rob, can, Rob shows up at 6.59 every day and then stays 100% focused until 10.59 when he goes to lunch, and then he's back 100% focused until 2.59 when he leaves. Yep. Not like these slackers. <laughs> Over here we got the uh, the Harbor Freight Special, which honestly has done... It's been very reliable Yeah, for yeah it's us been a solid tool. We've probably, we've used this for five years or so, and it's never given us any trouble. Still is smooth, runs great. Tire machine, not Tire, much to say there. Yeah, Everyone's least favorite machine to use here. We don't do that for anybody. Don't reach out to us. We're not changing your tires for you. Yeah, this is only for us. If you email me wanting your tires changed, <laughs> no. Classic Bridgeport machine, love this one. Variable speed head, digital readout, auto feed, and the X. Solid machine. Does everything we needed to do. We recently, I say recently, I guess in the past few months, got rid of our CNC machine, which we're trying to get another one. We had an Akuma CNC mill, yep. and uh, that actually sat right here, but it just gave us so many problems. So we ended up getting rid of that, and then we're trying to figure out another it solution. It was old. Yeah, it was, she was old. old. Nothing against Akuma. It was just old. This is a. Uh, this is our cleanup sheet because if you see right here, these hippies, they always forget. Always forget to clean. Yeah, but when I say uh, all the hippies forget to clean, I mean everybody but Rob. Everyone with long hair. We got another MIG welder down there. I don't know why. We got um, a mag drill. Occasionally you'll need that for drilling a hole into a plate that's on the table. Just a nice tool to have. So that's for handlebars, sissy bars. Um, Hardtails, just kind of our stock of material. Got a jig shelf here. Mitch, who you will meet shortly, uh, is the jig master. He's kind of the mastermind behind a lot of that. But these are all assorted jigs that help to make some of our finished products. This is the uh, this is another Harbor Freight deal. It was like one of those things that we bought, and we were like, well, hopefully this will just get us by until we find one. And it's still cranking. We probably had it for five years, but solid machine. Stand behind it. This is. An old belt sander that came out of a glass shop, I believe. I think it's... That's correct. Yeah. Um, it says it back there. There's a tag back here that says... Henry glass Lang. Wor glass working or glass something. Glass working in machinery. Um, there used to be fluid that ran through here and it sat in this trough. And then it would circulate for whatever they were sanding. We don't use that. We just use it as a belt sander. But it's really cool. Simple, easy change of the belt. Just like that. And then to tighten it, get you ready. This is our Balador bench grinder with a multi-tool attachment on it. Again, same thing here. These belts are super easy to change. Um, just nice to have. This, this is, gets a lot of use here. Yeah, this gets one a ton of, of use. the most heavily used tools here. I would say. I'd say this is this is probably the, actually the most heavily used tool. We got um, this probably two years ago now, I guess. Coming yeah. up on two years ago, Urkelina Bender. Um, we use it a lot for handlebars, sissy bars, hardtails, uh, stuff of that nature. It's been good for us so far. I had to make a few modifications to it uh, to get it where we wanted to, but um, she's been a good addition. Yeah, so for whatever product we have to bend, Mitch created this. It's the Bending Bible. So it has um, all of our different calculations, stop positions, rotations, uh, for whatever the specific product is. Matt, blur that out, proprietary. <laughs> All right, so this is our production book. This is another Mitch creation. 
Yeah, so with all the fixtures that you saw back there on that shelf, it shows you exactly how to put, in this case, the slingshot clutch pedal, clutch pedal on the fixture to weld it. So really simple, kind of crude fixtures, but they work great. We have that for every single one of our products that's made in-house. Even little things like uh, for this bolt, we, we, put, we drill a hole through it for safety wire or a safety pin, and uh, it says use McMaster part, blah, 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 use the drill to drill through at the mill. So, But anyway, it's like that for every single product that we manufacture in-house. Chopper parts for dummies. Yeah. Dwayne, are we allowed to go into your kingdom? Don't touch anything. This is uh, the home of Dwayne's powertrains, Derek's business over there. Well, this is our friendly neighborhood pull-up bar. Jake's <laughs> gonna flex real quick, as he often does. Um, but yeah, this is Derek's room, Dwayne's powertrains. Does a lot of uh, motor rebuild it, rebuilds in here. That's core see, of his look. business. He's a beer van. I don't see any fish in there, do you? No, no you fish in think there. Beer There's one on the wall. Right choice. Yeah. But yeah, this is his room. Uh, he'll probably do a video eventually telling you some more about it, but this oh, is yeah. his his lair. Wizard puzzle, snap on everything. He's a big snap on nerd. A no smoking sign, which gets disobeyed a lot. It's got a broken window, see? Covers it with a Bud Light box. Oh Super. yeah, get a close up of this window sill, Matt. It, it's a good look into Derek's Super. psyche and soul. He's got the old snap on bobblehead. Uh, I like the troll. The troll's my personal favorite. Yeah. So yeah, Derek uh, Derek works out of this room. This was Derek's first Harley that he was talking about. It's a bad boy. It's a bad boy. He still rides it all the time. Look at his front tire. It's a race slick. We finally talked him into uh, changing the rear one eventually, but the front one has not been changed. That replacement's it's been there It's a used for, replacement. Yeah, it's a used replacement, and it's been sitting there for at minimum six months. So. And the tire machine is exactly 12 steps from here. So. We're really not allowed to be in this room. He gets upset with us if we touch anything in here. Like if you move this slightly out of line, we'll come back later, it'll be fixed. Let's just turn this the other way. I, will, I don't know if that'll bother him because it's straight. Yeah, you're right. Just give that'll a, bother him. A little angle. Derek does super high end engine work. He's the one that actually built my 1952 original paint Bronco bronze bike, which is that photo right there on the wall. Yeah, I can't remember if that photo was taken before, I'll have to look, or uh, after he built it. I think it was before, because you can see the rocket box covers are super dirty. Derek does great work. If you've got something you need, hit him up on Instagram at Dwayne's Powertrains. He's got a, he's got a really good brain on him. He's, uh, he's very good at this. We're missing an apostrophe here, which is classic Derek, but uh, <laughs> this I, don't, I don't have much to add to this <laughs> sign, really. <laughs> Friendly reminder for Derek. What's his uh, fishing hat say over there? Oh yeah, we should check out the fishing hat. <laughs> Women fear me, fish fear me, men turn their eyes away from me. As I walk, no beast dares make a sound in my presence. I am all alone on this barren earth. That's One of nice. Derek's favorite pieces of Just wear that for the rest shop of the memorabilia. Wear that for the rest of it. Just a friendly reminder too, no smoking cigarettes. Jerry wouldn't say that. Yeah, we talked about this section a little bit. This, this is our last customer build that we've been working on. This is uh, for our friend Sid. It's a 1948 pan head. We got the frame chromed. We built pretty much everything on the bike. We'll do a walk around video of that and we'll get more detailed into that. So I'm not gonna cover that fully, but this is just one of our internal projects here. Um, I believe it's a 51 bottom end, and it's got later shovel head top end on it. Uh, we're gonna build a chopper out of that bike just for fun. It's got a really, really, really nice paint job on it, you know, cool diamond shape. It did have, so, an, it did have a nice paint job on it until yeah. there was one too many beers had and a can of spray paint came out. And so we're gonna strip all the black paint off and go back to gold. We don't do a ton of retail. We probably don't even have all of our no, item, I don't think uh, so. T-shirts and jackets and we, stuff out here, but do keep if, a rack up. If, if somebody does come in here, we do have a, a rack up. Um, this is probably the uh, the most sought after thing here. This is Rob's welding coat. Everyone that comes in ask if we have that in different sizes. Yeah, so we kind of have a bet going. For, so the first person to sell this gets 200 bucks. Also, if you look here, 
cover up this great customer's personal information. This is one of our hardtails going out into the wild. Going to Canada, um, actually. Going to Canada, yep. So um, if you need international shipping on a hardtail, hit us up. We will do it. Uh, we just got to get you a custom quote. So uh, email me. Orders at Prism Supply. I'll take care of you. Ben is the one that does everything behind the scenes. So from accounting to management to customer service to ordering parts to what else am I forgetting? There's like 10 other things. All um, the computer work. He's the one that makes everything happen without us having to do that. A lot of managing, stuff that we don't a lot of managing these fine employees. Who, who takes the most management? Who takes the most management? Matt. Um, it's Matt. Probably Derek. He's, he's only here half part time, half the, half, Three the days. half the week and he still takes more management. <laughs> Mitch, hey, Mitch takes the least management. Smokey takes a little management, but not much. This think, is Johnny's dog. I think Smokey. I think Smokey takes the least management. Yeah, maybe so. Hey, Smoke, you want to say hey to the fine viewers? Don't mind this guy just laying on its side. That's a uh, that's a '65 bottom end and a '66 top end. So kind of cool because it's a uh, uh, last year pan head, first year shovel head, combined as as one unit. This is the engine that's in that Wildfire Survivor bike. We're doing some work to it, so that's why it's out of the bike right now. And here's the rest of the parts for it. Johnny! Go see Johnny. What's up? This is Johnny, Smokey's owner. What's up? What's up, Dad? Uh, Johnny has been here. He's worked for us in two stints now. He moved to New York in between, but he came back uh, recently. We're glad to have him back. He does all of our shipping and receiving, as well as some fabrication and parts assembly. That's what he's doing in here now is parts assembly. This is our assembly room. so. Everything that's on these shelves is all the parts and pieces that go into making the finished product that eventually hits our website. Um, you can see it's all binned and skewed so we know what we have inventory wise. And uh, Johnny sits in here a lot of the day putting these things together so that you guys can buy them. He's from California, but we got over that. We love him. Still yeah, love them. It's okay. The best thing that he brings into the office every day is certainly Smokey. The better half. Ladies, both Johnny and Smokey are single. Johnny, what's your Tinder handle? Is that a thing? Is that how you say that? I don't I think don't that's how like Tinder works. works. <laughs> Smokey needs a mom though, so. Yeah, look Smokey at Smokey needs a mom. Look at this sweet dog. <laughs> don't you need a mom, bud? So another one of those books that we are showing you in there. Mitch Creation. So this is a, our assembly book. So you can open it and so first one is Super Prism Throttle, but it shows you the assembly of how every single one of our products go together. Because sometimes it's hard to remember the SKU and the quantity that goes into that SKU. So this is the entire assembly, and uh, it's a good reference for when you're building these parts. This is like the unfinished inventory section. So when it's not fully assembled, it lands in this room. As soon as part is welded, machined, whatever, completely finalized, it goes into the next room. And which we'll go in there in a second, but anything in that room is ready to pick off the shelf and go. The parts in here may need ground, polished, finished, welded, assembled, right. a variety of things. So. Where it's just individual pieces of hardware, screws, bolts, nuts, washers, snap rings. Johnny runs our DJ in here every day too. We don't have it on right now because we're doing a video and that would be distracting. YouTube but, will shut us down. Um, yeah, they, YouTube would yeah. try to take all our monies. Um, but Johnny is, the king of the DJ booth here. He has a computer in there that he runs our music on every day over the speakers at the shop. And wouldn't trust anybody else with that job, to be honest. Majority of it's blues. A lot 60s, of blues. 60s, 70s blues. A lot of Grateful Dead. A lot, a lot, of, Grateful a lot of Grateful Dead. Dead. A lot of canned heat, which if you know much about canned heat, there's not a lot of it. So same, same so songs a lot. Johnny's also the one that creates any of the Spotify playlists that we've sent out, which isn't very often. But whenever we do do that, we're trying to do that more often. We just don't get to it because we're busy doing other things. But he's the one that creates. He's created a lot. most of them. Yep. So this is the finished product room we were talking about. All of our shipping uh, for orders comes out of this room. Uh, anything in here should be bagged, tagged, and ready to be put in a box and sent to the customer. But yeah, basically the way it works is once we get an order through our website, eBay, any of our wholesale accounts goes into this system on our computer, and then we can just click print packing slip. The packing slip has a SKU on it. Grab a SKU put it right in this appropriate package. Johnny, sorry, I just ate the last of your nerds, dude. Very good though. I'll throw the trash away. True. Kids these days. See, it's the long hair, guys. That's what you gotta make the notes for. Yeah, so we're moving out of this room shortly, actually. Well, the room that we were just in, the assembly room, will move to this room, and uh, we're also moving our office a couple spaces down uh, just to have a little bit more space. So this room will be moved into our new office. This is our fire cabinet. 
one of the most disorganized places we have. But when the fire department comes, it's always locked and ready to go. It's a stay out of here, fire department. Um, oh, don't come. I'm kidding. You can come anytime. Love to have you. We know we know we don't have a ton of warehouse space, so I, it is super, super important for us to keep these two rooms specifically um, dialed. So with SKUs, inventory, everything, just organization. The whole, just the whole deal. They have to be very organized because yeah. we're kind of limited on space. Um, so you'll see things like these handlebar racks and stuff like had to make all of those because we just continually run out of space in here. So, But the nice thing also about making the majority of this stuff in-house is we can keep lower quantities of inventory. We don't need to order 50 sets of one handlebar. Um, we can just make five. And then when the, that five sell through, we can make five more. So it's a benefit of making the majority of that stuff in-house. I know we said the bender and the grinder were the most used tools in the shop. Oh, yeah. It's truly this. Um, shout out to Hex Coffee for keeping us caffeinated all the time. How many how many pots of coffee do you guys think we make a day? I'm gonna say we make four a day, at least. I make two. I usually Matt make drinks one it when all. I get here. Matt drinks it all. Before these guys. So I'll make the first one, and then Matt will drink it all, and then I'll have to make the second one because I didn't grab any coffee. And then I'm sure Johnny makes at least one. And then Matt probably drinks the second one, and then we get to drink the third one. So definitely most used, most used tools in the shop. And Matt has a really, really weird way of making coffee. This is so our don't fridge. Allow <laughs> Not in the best shape that it's ever been. Could use a cleaning, but uh, we'll get to that. Not like, much in it. Some water, some, death. some uh, Newton juices, as we like to call them, and some some of Caro's lovely soup. Oh, here I bet you there's some goodies in here. Mmm. Some mezcal, some Sailor Jerry. Fridge is where you go after it's been, or the freezer is where you See, go look, after a long day. Right here. Invest in your own future by American. Got some Crown Apple, Crown Royal Apple. Courtesy of Justin Haney. Thank you, Justin. Got some Bullet. Yeah, if you got if you got stickers out there, send them for the fridge. But if they're not cool. We're not going to use them. We're not going to use them. Sorry. So, so only send cool stickers. It'll be fun for you to send them and see if we like them and see if they make the cut. And if not, we got some artwork up make here. Make a better sticker. This is a happy new year. I guess we can get rid of that. It's Derek's family, though. Yeah, we don't want, Derek doesn't want his family to be seen. I have to blur that out. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Kim. Uh, no need to go into the prison bathroom, I don't think. But. Oh, yeah, we got a tumbler back here. We ran out of room in the shop, so we had to add the tumbler in the bathroom. It gets noisy in here with the fans, so maybe we'll leave the light off. Should we turn this on to give them an atmosphere of what it's like when you're using the restroom with the tumbler on? Yeah. Audio peaking. Go ahead. Do that. Nice and peaceful in here. Yeah, this tumbler didn't come with a uh, filtering system pump on it, basically. So retrofit our own using a, a tile saw pump. So works pretty well. This is the kind of thing I'm responsible for around here that no one listens to. You gotta buy a case. Uh, you of, gotta bring a case of beer in on Monday if you forget to clean the bathroom on your Friday. You'll get blasted out if you don't. Harsh penalties around here. Mm -hmm. This tape machine's nice. <laughs> oh I, yeah. I've had that for a Can't long time. A, check this out. This thing's nice. Custom prism tape, nice, wet, and sticky. Every order comes with this uh, nice and fancy sticker pack. You can see our bubble wrap above you. Those holders are wildly inefficient to hang it up there, but very handy once it's up there, so. Gotta show this stuff. Little who would say we're Jerry Girl. That's all real Wassel tanks. This is our uh, first and only trophy that we've ever won. And actually, we didn't win it. It was Derek that won it uh, with that black Evo that we were just talking about, his first Harley. I don't know where the, the boar came from. I think, somebody, I, I think somebody gifted us the boar and then shot the arrow through the head. Here's our super unorganized toolbox. Ah, it's not so bad. Yeah, could use a little bit of work. But old snap-on boxes still work great. This is probably the coolest sticker in here. I make my living with snap-on tools. Please don't ask to borrow them. I mean, other than the prism sticker or the Harley sticker. So maybe that's the third coolest one. This shelf is a collection of all sorts of things, carbs, an old sound system that I'm not sure it works. Some prototypes, all sorts of stuff. It's the display we use for our shows to show uh, our lights and how bright they are. To the office. I have to go outside to get to the office. 
It's not a very pretty day here in Charlotte. Yeah, it's nasty out. All right, office right next door in this lovely pink building. There he is, Theo, King Theo. This is Mitch, who we've been talking about uh, throughout this video. He does a lot of our drawings, parts design. Uh, he loves anything that's electrical related. The brain behind a lot of the parts you see here. He figures out all the new tools that we get. He makes all the jigs. For example, the, uh, the printer over here, Mitch is the one that has got that thing functioning right and printing nice things. After we design it, this is our very, very, very initial way of prototyping a product. We'll print it, we'll be able to look at it, actually feel it, holding it, hold it in our hands to actual size. Oh, yeah. For example, when we were doing the psychic shifter, <laughs> easy, Matt. Uh, this, is a, this is a version that we printed. You could actually like, mount it up to a transmission once you drill the holes in it, obviously, and see how it feels sitting on a motorcycle. Mitch is over here drawing something funny. I don't know, some sort of jig. That's a piece that we're using on that bender that we were looking at. That's a piece we're prototyping, I should say, to help bend our, our mid pegs. So yeah, this is Mitch's desk. Mitch spends about half the day, I would say roughly half the day in here, designing products, um, organizing SKUs or doing something like that. Right here at this desk, the other half the day, he spends pretty much in the shop prototyping parts, um, or helping the guys with assembly, fabrication, welding. Mitch does a little bit of everything around here on the fab side of things. He's a jack of all trades. This is Jake's desk. I sit here. This is Matt's desk. You never see Matt because he's pointing the camera at you or at us while he's filming us, but Matt's our content guy. He was a friend of ours long before he worked here and now he's working here full time. And uh, I sit three feet from him every day and I haven't gotten tired of him yet, so I guess he's pretty good. All the content that you guys enjoy and watch, it's all done by him. He loves Volkswagen. Shout out Matt. He loves, loves Volkswagens. Volkswagens. That's his reading material when he's supposed to be working. These are some uh, Polaroids from our buddy Connor from a camping slash fishing trip we went on not too long ago. You can see Jake's van there. This is Connor over here. It's me, Ben, fishing. There's Rob. It's our buddy Kyle, Johnny and Smokey. It's just a nice little family style camping trip we went on for a weekend. This is the... Uh... 52 that I still own, Bronco Bronze, original paint Bronco Bronze. That's a, this is a gas tank. This is for a personal project that I'm working on. It's a 1950 Panhead. If you look behind you over here, this is Wildfire, the survivor chopper that uh, Jake showed you the motor for it. It was on the floor in there earlier. Um, you probably saw it on our Instagram, but doing a little work to it. So for now, the roller is sitting in the office. The panhead casually sitting on the floor is uh, one of our buddies. We had it, he wanted it, so it's now his. We're always, we're always just buying and selling unique things that we like typically hardly related. Um, so this is an engine that I found and bought and recently sold to our buddy Josh that we're gonna help him out with on a project. You can see Paradise up here. Second born free bike we built. Chooch. Yeah, Dean Chooch Landry photo, and then up here, congregation photo. That is the inaugural. inaugural congregation. Show five this year. Had to skip 2020, but got back after it last year. Congregation number five will be this year, October 8th, here at Camp North End. So come check it out. Uh, you can see the shop while you're here. Speaking oh, of yeah, another windowsill. We have lots of trinket windowsills. Yeah, this is just kind of like a fun shelf that we store cool parts that we like unique parts or things that people have gifted us. This is a, uh, this is still in the box, Bates headlight. Gotta be careful, I don't wanna rip through the plastic, but it's the, uh, the side mount one. It's pretty cool, pretty cool piece. I'd say that's my favorite thing on the shelf, but I can't even see because I keep it in this box. It's our coffee keg. We might have to retrofit it to be a beer keg. There's conversation about that, but more to come. Derek said that the other day, by the way. What, like, convert it to a beer, beer keg? See, the beer, beer drinking Derek. All right, guys, thanks a lot for, uh, for watching this probably terribly boring video. Um, but that's our shop. Thank you guys for all the support over the years. I hope you enjoyed getting a little inside view to what we do daily. And uh, we're going to keep doing it. It's what we love to do, and we're passionate about motorcycles and making things here in the USA. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. That was 51 minutes. Ooh, I wonder you how much can't we... make a good video out of 51 minutes. I wonder how much footage. we can cut out. It's on you. <laughs> yeah, please, a lot. Yeah, no.